up with us today? Ingo Swan. Ingo's uh, talk is remote viewing of UFOs and ETs. Acclaimed as our generation's greatest psychic, Ingo Swan was a central figure in the CIA-sponsored psychic spying program using remote viewing. In one of his very rare public appearances, Ingo will discuss what remote viewing reveals about extraterrestrial contact with our species. Okay, everybody, we'd like to welcome Ingo Swan. questions from the audience. I get tired of writing lectures and actually I stopped doing that as of this last June and I'm not going to write anymore because it takes too much time. And I've always liked to know what people in the audience have in mind because it helps expand my knowledge of people out there. and. Um, Actually, if you people weren't out there and have an interest in things, then Pat Marcatillo couldn't set this up. <laughs> so um, that was what I was going to do, and I probably will still do that. But I think that how many here were born after 1965? Yeah, so you don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> So what I think I'll do is um, tell you who I am in a partial sense. Um, in New York in 1970, I had a very good friend named Zelda Supli, who had worked in publishing and was a first class editor and at that time director of the Erickson Educational Foundation. And she was a big earth mother type, but her main, main claim to fame was that she and her husband had owned three nudist camps during the 40s and 50s. And as a result, she knew everybody in the world because everybody came to her nudist camps. And she was wonderful, and I just, just adored her, and I hung out a lot of times in her apartment for her. And anyhow, she uh, was one of these types that everybody who is outside of society comes to talk to, you know. And so she had a wide circle of friends, and amongst those was a young man and wife who, uh, this was just at the period when infrared photography became available to the public, and so they were running around with cameras in, loaded with infrared film, and they wanted to see if infrared film could catch psychic phenomena like ghosts and things like that. So anyhow, one day I was at Zelda's and these two came and uh, they said, uh, we've been trying to find people who can produce energies that might uh, record on, on the film. And um, so Zelda said, why don't you try Ingo? So I went with these two into Zelda's bedroom and the drapes could be closed, so it was perfectly dark. There was no light in there and I sat in this chair and these two had set up their camera and were aiming it at me, and they said, uh, all right, Ingo, do your thing. <laughs> and I said, well, um, what is that thing I'm supposed to do? I didn't have a clue. So they said, well, create some energy in your hands. So I said, okay, I'll try that. <laughs> so I stuck my hands out and imagined energy in them and things like that. And I said, well, I." What else can I do? And they said, uh, well, make a ball of light above your head. So I did that in this totally dark room and things, and then we did a lot of other things. So then the film had to be developed, and that took about four days back then. And then they came back with 
here I am sitting in this chair with the light bulbs in my hand and you can see them, they're sort of half moonlight and half moonlight, moonlight, and they lit up the underside of my face and things in this dark room. <laughs> and you could push me over with a feather. <laughs> I'm leaning on this. <laughs> Why didn't you have that fixed up before you started? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an amateur. Amateur. <laughs> so then, the really nice one was that. Imagine the ball of light over your head. You know, well, it wasn't a big ball of light. It was a little tiny ball of light, about three feet over my head, where I said I was trying to do that. And, and then uh, a lot of the film didn't show anything, and, uh, but there were three or four other ones that were really good. So this came like a bombshell in, in Manhattan at, at, at the edges of the parapsychology community. And um, even Stanley Krippner said, this is wonderful. Do you, have you ever heard of Stanley Krippner? Well, he says everything is wonderful, but I think he really meant it in this case. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, so then that was in June. It was hot as hell in New York. And then it came in September. Now Zelda was a, uh, a Virgo, as I am, and for many years she'd been holding a Virgo birthday party for all of the Virgos that she knew, you know, because everybody hates Virgos, you know, they're so <laughs> pissantish, I guess. <laughs> and uh, so she invited them all, and, and so a lot of them came. And then I, that was the party I met. Um, 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 Gosh, you see, I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, I met, um, damn, uh, who was it I met? <laughs> no, I already knew Stanley Kipner. Yeah, uh, Bob Monroe, I met Bob Monroe. And then I met the plant research guy. What was his name? Clive Baxter? Clive Baxter. I may not get through this lecture. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, Bob Monroe was, I mean, everybody was in awe of these tacky little photographs, you know. And um, everybody said, do you want to try it again? I said, I don't think so, you know. Anyhow, uh, I got along with Bob Monroe really well, and we became lifelong friends until he died. And then there was Cleve Baxter, who, um, do you remember him? He, he had a big um, lie detector school in Manhattan, and he was a consultant to the CIA and the FBI lie detecting systems, and he trained their personnel to do this and everything. So he had a lot of lie detectors, you know. It was a, a lab that had about, oh, I don't know, eight or nine rooms to it. So he had taken um, his lie detector things and hooked them up to plants to see if plants would uh, show anything on the output of the lie detector. And the plants did. They showed an electric potential thing going up and down like this and everything. And then he said, well, is this a consciousness or is this just electric potential in these plants and everything? So he got the idea. He pulled out, uh, he got a match and burnt the leaf of one of them. And there was this big spike <laughs> that occurred on, on the readout. So the plant had responded to this burning. And uh, he was a kind man, and, and he didn't want to really burn his plants. And, and then he found out if he just thought he was going to burn his plant, that there was a big spike. And, uh, and so he was having people come in and uh, think about burning the plant leaf and watching the thing on the lie detector output, you know. So anyhow, at Zelda's party, he uh, was a very shy guy, and he gone into the kitchen and gotten in this little space between the refrigerator and the wall, and there were several women who were trying to jump his bones back there, and uh, everything, and he was talking plant, and they were talking about how beautiful he was. Anyhow, I, I sort of muscled in, I said, you know, I'd really like to see this plant stuff. And he says, well, come on up to my lab. And I, so, a few days later, I went 